Okay, I'm betting there is not a single person watching this now or who has ever watched it who is satisfied with that ending. Even reviewers back in 1945 who liked and recommended the film warned that audiences were going to be disappointed by the abrupt finish. A great villain deserves a great demise, and that might be the sorriest excuse for a death scene in the history of motion pictures, not just noir. In Phyllis Batome's novel, Hilda actually does poison Ronnie, fatally. The entire point of the story was the moral conundrum, is it justifiable to murder a murderer? And that quandary was the raison d'etre of Batome's story. The only way the production code office might have allowed Hilda to kill Ronnie was if she was summarily punished herself. Those were the PCA rules. They didn't want kids to think it was okay to poison their parents if they were mean to them. Well, as I mentioned at the top, the casting of Faye Emerson proved especially problematic in that regard. Her highly publicized engagement to Elliot Roosevelt, FDR's son, presented a few silly snags during production, like her making the entire cast and crew leave the set each day to wave at Roosevelt who used his authority as an officer in the Army Air Force to buzz the Burbank studio every day, his cute way of saying hi to his fiance. But once Emerson was officially the president's daughter-in-law, and she was living in the White House long before Danger Signal was released, there was no way the studio could show her murdering anyone, even somebody who deserved it as much as Ronnie Mason. It's a shame that Warner Brothers executives didn't understand that movies last longer than marriages. Always have, always will. Faye Emerson divorced Elliot Roosevelt in 1950, and yet here we are, stuck with this crummy ending forever. As a side note, Emerson emerged from that six-year union in better shape than her ex. Roosevelt was implicated in several wartime purchasing scandals, and his penchant for shooting off his mouth tarnished the Roosevelt name. Once she ditched Roosevelt, Emerson went on to become one of the most recognizable and stylish personalities on television. The Faye Emerson Show was the first late-night TV talk show ever hosted by a woman. And although she had pretty much abandoned Hollywood, she continued acting on stage until the early 1960s, when she retired to Europe. Now, as for Phyllis Batome, history shows that she played a part in the creation of one of the most famous fictional characters of all time, James Bond. In 1924, Batome and her husband, Ernan Dennis, created an innovative school in Austria in which the curriculum was specifically designed to cure the ills of nations. Well, Ernan Dennis was, in fact, an agent of MI6, the British Secret Service, and one of their pupils was Ian Fleming. It's generally believed Fleming modeled James Bond on the character of spy Mark Chalmers in Batome's 1946 espionage novel, The Lifeline. In addition to Danger Signal, Phyllis Batome had three other novels adapted to the movies. Private Worlds, a 1935 Paramount drama about a psychiatric hospital starring Claudette Colbert and Charles Boyer. 1958's Heart of a Child, a tear-jerking shaggy dog story and most memorably, Frank Borzaghi's 1940 classic, The Mortal Storm, with Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan, one of the first and strongest anti-Nazi movies of its time. Batome was a very public anti-fascist, while her husband worked undercover against the Nazis. Next week, I'll be giving the Noir Alley treatment to a film very familiar to TCM viewers, Gilda, starring Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford. You've seen it 10 times? Well, make it 11. And then check in with us on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed to tell us what you thought of today's film. Until then, see you in the shadows. <laughs>